we're going to look at several different ways of bringing curves around the shape. So this is a typical shape of say a bonnet where it's very flat here and then it curves towards the front end. So the first thing that we're going to do is look at what happens if we try and put a single curve in there. So single bezier or single span curve. So let's just do that. So I'm going to start off with just degree one and then I'm going to increase the order to degree two and we can start moving some CVs around. So if I move that, if I move that up and down, you can see that we can't get a very good fit and um, to that data, understandably, since we've only got degree two. Now, at the moment, what I'm trying to do is keep the spacing of these CVs very regular, very uniform. Um, when we move that up and down in Z, we're actually increasing that distance slightly over, over that, that one. So we should really push that towards the left as well. Obviously, we're still not going to get that shape if we just move it up and down in Z. So let's increase the degree. I'm going to have to increase the degree quite a bit. Let's try four. And again, when we push that up in Z, we ought to move it over to the left a bit, just so that the 3D distance is as uniform as possible. And we're still nowhere near the shape. So now we've got it up to degree seven, which is as far as we want to take it. And let's just push those points up, try and keeping them, keeping them regular. And you can see we're still, we're still struggling to get that shape, particularly around here. You know, over here shouldn't be a problem, but not too surprising because this is a flat area and we've got lots of CVs. The, the problem there is trying to keep uh, the curve from inflecting because if we look at the curvatures there, you can see that it inflects. And if you actually squash the view up with non-proportional scaling, you can see that very clearly. So we've got too many CVs here and not enough CVs here. So that's, that's option number one, if you like. Um, so single span, one curve, fairly uniform CVs. So let's try, instead of that, we're gonna try a single span, but with two curves. So this is the traditional way in which um, you would construct this. So what we do is we, we're looking at this area, this is quite tight, this is very flat. So we do it in two curves. So we create a curve that defines the flat area. So let's just do that from here to somewhere along here. I'm just putting in degree one to start with, and then we can increase the degree to two. And we probably need to go non-proportional here again, just so we can see what's happening. So we'll extend that. We usually want to make sure that's oversized. The reason being is that we can see the direction of travel of that curve there. So now I'm going to push these. Again, we're trying to keep uniform CVs here. So I'm going to push those up and down and very quickly we can get very much the shape that we want. If we wanted a little bit of acceleration, because at the moment with degree two, that's going to be a very uniform curvature, as you can see. If I make that degree three, then that gives us the opportunity to increase the curvature of this end or accelerate it towards this end. But by just moving them up and down, it doesn't really accelerate it very much, but it does give us a little bit more possibility of increasing the curvature here because we need that curvature to increase as we go into this curve down here. So our second curve, again, I'm just going to start from degree one, somewhere like that, and we'll make that degree. I'm going to increase it in one hit, really, um, maybe make it degree three and, um, and see what we can do there. So first of all, we want this to align here, so we might as well just align that. So let's go into a line, G2. So I'm just looking at G2 continuity. And we'll align that into there. And because we've got um, degree three here, those two points there actually give us that G2 continuity. Now you can see that my spacing of CVs isn't entirely uniform. I'm trying to stick to that rule at the minute just to show you um, what that does is quite difficult to get this shape with those being uniform. So I need that line there to be defining the tangent of the, the black line that we started off with that's our data. Um, now, if we want to increase the degree, we can do it here. 
So let's make it degree five, gives us more flexibility. And then we can go into C, into uh, moving the C, CVs around, trying to get that shape. So again, I'm trying to keep these as uniform as possible just to, to show that principle. So we've got, we've got a curve there that's pretty good. Um, curvature wise, it's G2 continuity here. In fact, just by luck, really, we've managed to get it almost G3 um, because of this, the placing of that CV, the fourth CV from this end um, means that we've got almost G3 there. We could probably change the line and make it G3 there and we'd get good results. So that's a pretty good result. Um, and we've done it in two curves. So that's the sort of traditional way of doing it. But if we want to make it slightly more efficient, um, let's just try this version. So we're going to do a single span, one curve, but we're going to allow the CVs to be pushed together. So, if, so far we've just had the CVs very equally spaced. Now we're going to see what happens if we push them together or allow that to happen. So we go from here to here. Um, I think I'm still in non-proportional scale mode here, which is exaggerating the shape, which is, which is good. So I'll increase the degree to two. And this time, instead of just moving that point, more or less up and down in Z, we're going to actually just allow it to go wherever we want to. So by allowing us to push it over there, so we're pushing it into an area of higher curvature, then we're getting closer to the shape almost immediately. So let's increase the degree again, uh, maybe one more. So you always want to increase the degree slowly. You don't usually want to go straight into degree seven. That's not the best idea. The reason is because the spacing if you, if you start off with a lower degree, you can, you've got less to deal with and the spacing of the CV sort of takes care of itself as you increase the degree. You notice sort of the movements I'm making are much smaller as I'm, as I'm doing this. So we're getting a bit closer. Let's increase the degree again. Um, I think I will make it degree seven. Let's just go for it this time and see what we can do. So we're actually getting I'm having to push these CVs more into this corner. Maybe these ones need to go along that way as well, because we really don't need many CVs in here, in here, because there isn't much in the way of shape. You know, it's just very flat. Um, if you if you're pushing CVs into a an area of higher curvature, you want it progressive. So you want this one, this distance to be longer than that one, longer longer than that one, and so forth, until you get to the point of the um, tightest curvature. And because this is one curve, admittedly it's quite a high degree, but it doesn't, it's not the end of the world, it doesn't matter. Um, but we've got a very simple shape. We will have 100% continuity in terms of our curvature. So we're going to get that curvature. Now we've got a little bit of a crossover there. And if we zoom into there, this would just be a question of moving those last three CVs around a bit. So we'll put in some mouse sensitivity there, move that one down a bit onto the data. So now we've, we've got it, a positive curvature there. I'm trying to get it back onto the data a little bit, something like that. So that's what we can do if we allow bunching. Let's go out of non-proportional scale, because when you're in non-proportional scale, sometimes you think the CV spacing is okay, but actually get a bit of a shock when you see it with, without that on. Um, but this looks pretty good. It's fairly progressive from this end. It's, it's sort of pretty equal actually on this end, but this one is progressive. It's bigger there, smaller, smaller again until we get to that corner. And um, so that works quite well. And the beauty of that is, you know, when we create surfaces off that, of course, that's uh, very simple. Um, so the, the, the fourth example is where we've got multi-span. So we, we had a look at this example where we've got two curves. And multi-span really is equivalent to, to doing two curves, but we just do it in one curve rather than, than a number of curves. Um, and the advantage of this is that, again, if we create a surface of it and we keep it as multi-span, then we only have one <coughs> surface to worry about. We don't have to align them internally. So there's a benefit in doing this. So if I go into CV curve again, I'm going to increase the degree and we'll just make it, I don't know, four. And 
In fact, there's a good reason for making it four. Let's change that mouse sensitivity. I should start off actually by making it um, not four. Let's just drop that down to three. And um, and I'll explain the reason in a minute. So if we if we go into degree three, um, again, I'm going to allow bunching this time. I'm, I'm going to allow pushing the CVs towards that area so we get a bit closer to the data. Um, now, instead of increasing the degree, let's look at what happens if we increase the, the number of segments. And uh, so we're going to, or the number of spans. So we're going to increase the spans to two and we'll accept that. Now, when we got that, we, you can see the CVs, it puts new CVs in and it, one of the things it does is it puts CVs quite close to the end, which the spacing looks a bit odd compared with what we're used to with Bezier. Um, if I put the comb display on, you can see the curvature is absolutely perfectly fine. Now, when we start moving these CVs around, so we've got degree three here. What degree three means is that at the, at the knots or the edit points, so we need to see these edit points. So there's the edit point there. There's limited continuity. And the limitation is that we've just got G3 continuity there. So we don't see that until we start to move these CVs around. So if we try and put some more sort of what, we'd, what you'd call um, conventional spacing of the CVs in terms of our Bezier single span experience. So, you know, the, these are more spaced as we see them on a, on a Bezier surface or a single span surface. Then we can, that it highlights the fact that we've only got G2 at that point which isn't necessarily, uh, you know, what we might not, we might want just G2, but if we want G3, then we have to go up a degree. So if we make that degree four, it'll change the curve because it has to, because it's now made, because um, we've got degree four now, we've got continuity of G3 at the edit points. And so you get this very nice um, curvature going on here. So let's just move these points around a little bit. So it doesn't matter how much you move these CVs, you could make them however crazy you wanted to, wanted to and you'll still have G3 continuity. So it's guaranteed um, with de degree four. And obviously as you increase the degree even further, you get even higher levels of continuity to the point where it's indistinguishable from um, a single Bezier curve really in terms of, of curvature. So, there's, there's really no reason why you can't use a multi-span, but you could argue that, well, we've just gone to the degree four and we've got two spans, but you can uh, pretty much achieve the same thing with a single span where you allow the, this is with single span where we had allowed the, um, the CVs to bunch towards the areas of higher curvature. And we've got pretty much the same result. We've just got it in a different way. So there's nothing wrong with that really. Um, if you wanted to, um, you can turn that into Bezier anyway. You can turn that into single spans just by going into Object Edit Detach, and then we just snap to that point there. So I've used Control to just snap to that point and do this. And now we've got two two single span curves. So they've got that one degree four, and we've got this one degree four.